Math 321. I don't know what lecture we're on. Uh, we're starting review for chapter four, though. And chapter four, there's a lot of graphing in it. So we need to talk about the rectangular coordinate system. also called the Cartesian coordinate system. system. So starts off, we have, oh my God, that is the worst fucking straight line ever. That's fucking terrible. I think I'm drinking, I'm not. It looks like it though. As bad as that line was. Pretend that's a straight vertical line. Maybe I can make it. There you go. That's a little better. We'll just pretend it's there. I'll use red lines. We have an axis. These two, that we have a vertical line, a horizontal line. These are called the axes. We have little markers denoting how far apart things are. Maybe that's five and 10 going upwards. So the horizontal axis is called the x-axis. This is the x-axis. And this is the y-axis. The vertical one is the y-axis. So this is a grid system. Normally, this would look much better on graph paper. But I could have a point here. And the very center is where x equals 0 and y equals 0 at the very center. We call this the origin. And the way we write it is we write 0, 0. The first 0 stands for the, the x value, and the second 0 stands for the y value. So let's find the x and y value for this point up here. I have to go right one time, two times, three times, and now I'm underneath it. And I go up once, twice, three times, four times, five times. So I took three steps to the right and five steps up. My x value is three and my y value is five. I think this is the funniest stuff that we've done so far. What? <laughs> this is the funniest stuff we've done so far. Well, good. I'm glad you're enjoying it. Seems not, not too bad, right? You're following a treasure map. They actually, what is it? Geo, geocache? No, no, that's not it. Like, they do this in real life. They will give you coordinates on the bucket earth. And your job is to get to those coordinates and find the secret treasure. Oh, I've seen stuff like that before. It's like ge geo, it, geo hunting, geo. Like they use like little boxes or something, and you have to like write your name. Or something yeah, like you 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 put your name in there saying you found it. Uh, and sometimes you, some of them I know you you take the object out and put a different object in. Mm -hmm. uh, that way, it's like a different treasure each time. Uh, but yeah, and they do shit like this, but it's on Earth coordinates. So uh, the x values on the right side are all positive. Anything to the right of this vertical line in the middle is positive for x. And anything on the left is negative.
anything above the, the horizontal line is positive for y, and below it is negative for y. So if I had a point over here, I go left, one, two, three, four. So I'm going left four, and then I gotta go down two. Left is negative, down is negative. We do our X's or our horizontal stuff first. I have negative four, negative two. These things in parentheses are called coordinates. or ordered pairs. When we put a point on the graph, it's called plotting points. Plotting the point. All right, you guys ready for more? So you guys get to practice this. I want you guys to plot some points. You guys try plotting some points. Draw a vertical line, draw a horizontal line. And I recommend you just do at least five in each direction. I tend to make every fifth one larger. A larger, larger little crosshair thingy. That way it's easier for me to track increments of five rather than writing down just the value of every single number. And your job will be to plot. Let's go with negative uh, three comma five. Let's go with uh, one comma negative four. Let's go with negative one comma four. Now let's do both, negative one, negative four. And I don't know, uh, two, one. I'll call this, we'll call them points A, B, C, and D. When you put the dots down, just label what, what dot they are with a letter.
Anyone need lumber? All right, so negative three, five is left three and up five. A is right there. One and negative four is right one, down four. That should give you B. C is left one and down four, so that should be right there. And D is two, one, which means right two and up one, which is right there. So this is called quadrant one. And they go, the numbering goes counterclockwise. This is quadrant two, quadrant three, and quadrant four. I'm using Roman numerals. If you they don't if they don't mean anything to you, let me know and I'll explain what they are. They're divided up by those two lines, the vertical and horizontal lines we have here. Everything in quadrant one is a positive and a positive. Everything in quadrant two goes negative, then positive. Quadrant three is two negatives. And quadrant four is a positive, then a negative. Wait, wait don't distract with Kayla. She's actually enjoying the math right now. So something good about stats and stats, most of our graphs will be for linear equations. That will do or need to look at more by hand. are linear equations. Linear has the word line in it. Linear equations, when you draw them, are straight lines. Uh, any line that isn't straight, non-straight lines in mathematics are called curves. So if I use the word line, it, it means straight line.
Right, what? Okay, so we had a Y, our graph had our our graph has Y and X. Equate these are both variables. An equation in two variables. A linear equation, I should say. In standard form is AX plus BY equals C. where A, B, and C are numbers. While X and Y are variables. Uh, notice there's no exponents. We've talked about exponents before. Notice the lack of exponents here. When we have exponents, you get stuff like this. X squared plus Y equals 4 makes a curve where it looks like a mountain with arrows pointing downward. This is called a parabola. I could have both of them squared. And when they're both squared, we get something called a circle. But when we have AX plus BY equals C, just a straight line. Is it still fun, Michaela? Yes. Good. Just make the midterm over. <laughs> Fortunately, chapter four is not even on the midterm. That's right. That's just a bad beat for you. That's fucking funny. I think that's hilarious. The one part you're enjoying. Nope. Sorry about your luck. No, not really. I think the final is pretty easy. You don't have to do any computer work. You don't have to do any math. You're basically just doing statistics. The heart and soul of statistics. What does it mean? You'll see when we get there. I think it's easier. Everyone ready for more? All right, so let's look at an example equation. Let's do 4x plus 2y equals 8. So 
So we have that entire graph paper, but we can't just put points willy nilly. Like some things, numbers appear on the line and some don't. Like, let's try plugging in one, one. Remember the first one is X and the second one is Y. If I do, I have four times one plus two times one equals eight. Which after we do the multiplication says four plus two equals eight, which says six equals eight. This is just false. Which means one, one is not a solution for this equation. And so it won't be on the line. So the line doesn't pass through one, one. I'm using pass through like the same way you would say if you were driving north on 99, you would pass through Sacramento. You're going to go through, you got to drive through Sacramento if you're on the 99. And if you go far, I guess. Maybe Fresno is a better example. Pass through Fresno if you go down the 99. And when it's not a solution for the equation, they say it doesn't satisfy. That's the terminology they use. So we want values that do satisfy. And the values that satisfy the equation make a true statement, not a false statement. So we can do this. The easiest way to go about doing this is pick a value for one of the letters of the variables. And solve the equation for the other variable. Together, they will make an they make an ordered pair. So rather than saying x equals 1 and y equals 1, 
let's just say x equals one and find out which y value, uh, find out which y value will work. Got four times one plus two y equals eight. And we looked at how to solve this stuff in previous sections. So four times one is four. Then we, we're trying to get y by itself. We'll subtract four from both sides. And I get two y equals four. Then we'll divide both sides by two. And I get y equals two. y equals two when x equals one because we plugged in one. So one, two, that ordered pair satisfies the equation. And makes a point on the line. You guys ready for some more? Oh, wait. Oh, wait. Okay, that is something ready. So, a handy way about going and doing this, it's useful to make a table. We had 4x plus 2y equals 8, right? That's what I was doing. And oftentimes, people like to pick values that are near zero for x. We already showed that 1 and 2 were values that worked. You might actually find it easier, since we're solving for y each time here, it might be easier to solve for y first. Rather than doing it a whole bunch of times. Because we already saw it took a couple steps on the last one we did. We don't want to have to do a couple steps each time, do you know a bunch of calculations. So let's do that here. 
I have 4x plus 2y equals 8. I want to get y by itself, so we need to get rid of the 4x on the left side. And it's customary to put the x before the term without the x. And if I divide by 2, I get to divide each thing by 2. I get y equals negative 2x plus 4. That makes it a little bit easier to do, like get the table. If I want to plug in negative 2, I've got negative 2 times negative 2 plus 4, which is 4 plus 4, which is 8. Yeah, that was glorious. If I plug in negative 1, I've got negative 2 times negative 1. I'm just replacing the x here. Place x with the value on the left. Values on the table. Negative 2 times negative 1 plus 4 is 6. If I plug in 0, I just have 4. And when I plug in 2, I've got negative 2 times 2 plus 4. That's negative 4 plus 4, which is 0. So these make ordered pairs. Negative 2, 8. Negative 1, 6. 0, 4. 1, 2. And 2, 0. Plots. I can see all my y values are positive, so I'm going to make that part of the graph taller than the bottom side. Oh, I'm off the screen. Negative two, eight is up there. Negative one, six is right there. Zero, four is right there. One, two is right here. And two, zero is right there. There we go. So I'm going to connect these dots with a line. Again, not very straight, but that's because 
Apparently, I've got an unsteady hand today. You guys notice a pattern with these points, like with the Y values? What's the pattern going on with the Y values? They're going down by two, right? They're decreasing by two. Y is decreasing by two. as x increases by one. Decreasing would be like going negative. What's going on is that for every two we go down, we go right one. Two down, right one. And funnily enough, look at this. We got this negative two right here. I could write this as negative two over one. And now two down and right one is represented right there. Two down would be negative and right one is positive. This is called the slope. The slope of the line here is negative two over one. We give it the letter M. We're gonna do stuff more with M next week. We only got like six or seven minutes left. I wanna show you another way to like pick points on a table. How many points do I actually need to draw a line? Can I draw a line with just a single point and have it represent this equation? If I get really lucky, it's got to be going like this. If I made it go like this, that would be a bad line. It didn't work. Did it take all five points to make this line? Could I have done it with less? How many do I actually need? What's the, the bare minimum? Two. Since it's a straight line, we only need two. I need to know where I'm starting and where I'm going. So, did anyone need this up longer? Okay. We only really need two points to plot a line. But 
doing a third one is a great idea to make sure you didn't buck up on the first two. Uh, let's go with screw the pooch. You didn't screw the pooch on the first two. That's like fucking up. That's another way of saying fucking up. You screwed the pooch. You young whippersnappers probably don't use shit like that, but you might have heard your parents. Or maybe I'm just really fucking old. I don't know. Let's look at that 4x plus 2y again equals 8. And I'm going to put that table up here and say which one of these looks like it was the easiest to do and why. Which one took the least amount of actual work? The zero four. The zero four. I agree. Why? Uh, because you're not useful. Not really doing anything for the x. You're not really doing anything with that, that x equals zero, right? Zero just kills everything with it. I didn't actually have to multiply there. So. Using zero is the easiest. Because there's no calculate, there's few calculations. There's less calculations. So we could do zero. And we saw that we got four here. There's another spot I could put zero in though, right? I don't have to just put in the zeros for the x's. I could put in a zero for the y. If I put in a zero for the y, I don't even need to do anything with the two y. It just goes away. And I jump straight to having four x equals eight. So I don't need to add or subtract anything. All I got to do is divide by four. And I get X equals two. We have two points, zero, four, and two, zero. This is called the y-intercept. And I usually call it y dash int. That one is the x-intercept. Or x dot int. At this point, I usually like to do a third point between them just to make sure I didn't like do some bad division and say like eight divided by four is 12. That would be bad division. So like I would probably pick a point between them. So zero x equals zero and x equals two, I would probably pick one. X equals one is between zero and two. So it's a good third point that shouldn't be like way off the fucking graph. If you pick a different number that's outside of them, it's probably gonna be way off the graph. Now you gotta actually do a little work. Four times one plus two y equals eight. Subtract the four, we already did this. Two y equals four and y equals two when we divide by two. 
that gives me a point that looks like it's right smack dab between them. This is called plotting the intercepts. And now I would draw a line connecting them. And that's it for this one. We go, we'll start the next class in a little bit. A lot better today. Thank you for asking. Hit stop record. <laughs>